Like, you just. No, I don't do it. 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 I don't do People hate this episode more than any of those. Well, for starters, Atlantis are into my eyes. But let's go deeper into why this is such a terrible piece of crap. It starts with SpongeBob going to pop it before he gets the opportunity. Patrick blames the camera. Ready to go? You can go. I'll have three Krabby Patties. Last second thought, cancel the order! Does this really have a song? Okay, then. Besides the fact that this is a song explaining that bubbles pop, the lyrics are extremely forced. This is a song explaining that bubbles pop. The lyrics are extremely Siren! Oh, Siren, damn it! Alright! Pointless song. SpongeBob blows a bubble that encases the both of them. It lifts them off the ground and sends them careening into a random cave. The Bobby Bottom Museum. We cut to Mr. Krabs being his usual greedy self, charging people to get into the museum on a day when it's supposed to be free. When he's off the building, and it just so happens that Squidward is already there, of Atlantis, and thinks that SpongeBob stole it. I'm a tired! The worst in only 17! What a Season or two. It turns out that SpongeBob didn't steal the amulet of it, they're half of it. While Squidward is ranting on about Atlantis, I'm just thinking of if the writers actually know what an amulet is. To be worn around your neck, not a big fat medallion. SpongeBob and Patrick learn of the oldest living bubble. They currently <laughs> conversation about Atlantis. So we spent like three minutes. Woodward likes art. SpongeBob and Patrick like bubbles and conversation about Atlantis. So we spent like three minutes establishing that Mr. Crab opened the way to Atlantis. Yeah. Squidward is able to laser, which causes a van to drop out of the ceiling. Then the amulet goes into the van because mm -hmm. then the amulet goes into the van because it's magic. Yeah. Inside the van we get inside the van we get oh, it's very hard work to blend 2D characters with 3D animation. It's a good thing these guys are it's very hard work to blend 2D characters with trying. Unfortunately the van is out of fuel for forward motion with fuel to do anything with it. So our heroes push the van out of the museum, turn to a gas station, but it doesn't have a gas tank because it's a gas station, but it doesn't have a gas tank because it fuels. Instead, it runs on song, which means that the... That's something remotely pleasing. Bacon. 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 Yeah, this is a major ripoff of Willy Wonka. Yeah, that looks so futuristic. It looks like the Commodore 64. 
Yeah, this is a major ripoff of Willy Wonka. He's out of the group. Then they go to a group. Then they go to a lab full of high-tech gear. Yeah, that looks so futuristic. People would have more functionality in it. Extra, if you want to show us a lab, give us some of those electric orbs, Tesla coils going off, or maybe even an everlasting gobstopper. Size some creativity. If you want to show us a lab, give us some of those electric orbs, Tesla coils going off, or maybe even an everlasting gobstopper machine. Instead, we get a machine that turns anything into ice cream. The practical applications for that board would have more functionality on it. Exercise some creativity. Give us some of those electric orbs, or maybe even an everlasting gobstopper machine. Instead, we get a machine that are infinite. Oh, let's fight germs hand to hand. All right, head of the game. Spoon drop, Squidward. Go for a grabby patty. I'm calling a local crusty crab right now. Extremely advanced civilization was in the NES game. Actually, that's not fair. NES games put effort into their visuals, their enemy designs, and their sound direction. Speaking of which, it's a sound direction. Speaking of which, it's about that. I'm afraid the crew insists, sir. That's right, this gives us two songs. Well, somebody has to step up, fight that monster, and become captain. And that somebody is me. <laughs> An actual Atlantean culture. Trust me, buddy, no you don't. Buddy, no you don't. Speaking of which, it's Squidward's turn. Goodbye, Amy. But this song is just stretching itself way too hard. Or a half-assed attempt at it. Apparently this bubble is improvisation because I don't fucking know. That bit. Back at the beginning, the bowls were popping before the camera went off. If they can't get the big details down, why must we cut to the others eating spaghettios? Uh, in a few hours. Well, that was anticlimactic. Again. <laughs> and when questioned, Patrick spills the beans. <laughs> But it turns out for the bubble, and the War Royal Highness reveals the real bit. I would call that totally pointless. Oh wait, I don't! That was the climax. Sandy, the totally incompetent guard, who uses weapons. You know, SpongeBob and all. You know what I find funny? It's the way the climax of an episode, but not the fact- I get the bug in the bug in the ass. I can't do I can't take Wow, you guys get over something you figured out how to carry billions of light years through, get shoot onto the bus, the aim against Atlanta Square Pantus. Had any plot? The first one of them, anyway. Yeah, considering Sponge all your fire, we're still doing shit like this. Anytime that the story didn't take a break to throw us into a silly Wonka, and the songs themselves, nice. Especially compared to the schlock that these four assholes shoveled down old Twilight Sparkle. At least after these four assholes shoveled down Secure, but at least it told its own story, and didn't rely on stupid visual gimmicks that didn't require any real effort. One writer, I'm the mysterious Mr. Enter, and I'm out.